For the light of another day, for the work we have to do and the strength to do it, guide us by thy light, uphold us by thy power, and sustain us with thy love. Amen. 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 Oh, state of flag. <laughs> Attention, salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Can I have the roll call? Bennett? Here. Bertino? Here. Corsi? Uh, here. Days? Here. Fitzpatrick? Here. Fromica? Here. Kern? Here. Bisley? Here. And Gatto? Uh, Madam Chair, I, I didn't notice that you said the chairwoman was not here today because she won, she couldn't come in. That was thank my you, words. Thank, thank you for the correction. I, I, <laughs> that was my you, words. Thank you, Freeholder. Chairwoman Gatto is not here because she is out of town. Thank you. Uh, we've all had the opportunity to review the minutes from October 1st. If there are no corrections, I'll entertain a motion to adopt. So Second. Motion to be second. Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kerr? Yes. Okay, um, that takes us right into our ordinance. We have a final reading. 15, an ordinance establishing no passing zones along Cedar and Landis Avenue, County Route 540, slash 622 in the Township of Buena Vista, Atlantic County, final reading. Move. Second. Okay, motion to remain second. Uh, we now open to the public since it is a final reading. Does anybody from the public have any comments on this ordinance? Any freeholder comments? Okay, roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Fromica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Okay, that brings us into our resolutions, uh, 632. Grant application and acceptance from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development for the Continuum of Care for the Homeless Grant, grant funding $20,076, county cash match $5,019. Second. Motion to be made in second. Any freeholder comments? Any comments from the public? Roll call, please. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Uh, 633. Grant application from the New Jersey Department of Transportation for the replacement of Lake Creek Bridge EH29 project amount not to exceed two million three hundred sixty three thousand four hundred and sixty eight dollars. So moved. Second. Motion made second. <coughs> Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 634. Agreement with Atlantic County Sheriff's Foundation for the donation of a mobile medical outreach vehicle to the Atlantic County Sheriff's Office for the Hope One Mobile Outreach Project. Move. Second. Motion made in second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Okay, that takes us to our Chapter 159, so uh, I'll uh, combine and adopt, the motion to combine and adopt resolution 635 to 642. Move. Second. Motion made in second. Any comments? Three holders? Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Uh, 
641. Professional services agreements with various nurses and nurse agencies for the provision of death pronouncements in Atlantic County amount not to exceed $55,000. Question made second. Any comments from freeholders? Any comments from the public? Roll call, please. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Uh, 642? Professional services agreements with various appraisers to establish the 2019 2020 appraisal services pool for the provision of appraisal services amount not to exceed $150,000. Made in second. Any comments from freeholders? Uh, public and public comments. Okay, roll call. Bennett. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Days. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Fermica. Yes. Risley. Yes. And Kern. Yes. Six forty-three. Right. Professional services contract with Pharma Care Inc. for pharmaceutical consulting services for Meadowview Nursing and Rehabilitation Center amount not to exceed thirty thousand two hundred dollars. Second. Question made second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Fermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 644. Amended professional services contract with French and Pirello Associates for engineering design services associated with the replacement of Bungalow Park Bridge EHC08, Egg Harbor Green Bank Bridge, County Group 563, over Indian Cabin Creek in Egg Harbor City to extend the term date only. No additional costs. Move. Second. Motion made and second. Any comments from the freeholders? Public? Roll call, please. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 645. Amended professional services agreement with French and Pirello <laughs> Associates for the engineering design services associated with the replacement of Lakes Creek Bridge EH29 on Bevis Mill Road EH26 and EH27 in Egg Harbor Township to extend the term only no additional cost. Move. Second. Motion made second. Any comments from freeholders? For the public? Roll call please. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 646. Renewal competitive contracts with various vendors for the provision of youth <coughs> shelter beds Amount not to exceed $120,000. Second. Motion to be made in second. Any uh, freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. <coughs> Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Gatto? And Kurt. Oh, she's not. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 647. Bid contract with Arthur R. Henry Incorporated to provide traffic signalization of Blackman Road and Ocean Heights Avenue, County Route 559A in the township of Egg Harbor, amount not to, ex to, not to exceed $698,697.30. No, sir. Motion made and second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Martino? Yes. Corsi? Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Wisley? Yes. And Kurt? Yes. Uh, 648. Bid contract with various vendors to furnish and deliver inmate uniforms and supplies to the Atlantic County Justice Facility, amount not to exceed $163,431.04. Moved. Motion to be made and second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 649. Contract with Rutgers State University of New Jersey for the provision of dental services for Atlantic County residents, amount not to exceed $107,500. Second. Motion made second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Fermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 650. Agreement with Children's Specialized Hospital for the provision of special child health services, amount not to exceed $17,529. Second. Motion made second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Vermica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 651. Intergovernmental, intergovernmental Services Agreement with Atlantic Cape Community College to permit 
registered nurse students to participate in clinical observation at Meadowview Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, no cost. Second. Motion made second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Welcome. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Ms. Patrick? Yes. Fermika? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kerr? Yes. 652. Intergovernmental Services Agreement with Rowan College of South Jersey to permit registered nurse students to participate in clinical observation at Meadowview Nursing and Rehabilitation Center, no cost. Second. Motion remains second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Fermika? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kerr? Yes. 653. Authorizing acceptance and recording of a right-of-way deed from the owner of Block 1803, Lot 3.02, <coughs> on the tax map of the Town of Hamilton, amount not to exceed $1,725. Second. Motion made and second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 654. Authorization to participate in the Source Well National Cooperative and execute contracts with Grand Turk Equipment Company Incorporated for the purchase of for the purchase of a broom bear mechanical street sweeper amount not to exceed two thousand six hundred two thousand sixty one dollars. 2,061. Thank you. Oh, I'm having a problem. <laughs> $261,906.45. Thank you, Chair. Second. Motion made second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Uh, 655. Memorandum of Agreement between the County of Atlantic and um, the American Federation of State, Council, County, and Municipal Employees, New Jersey, Council 63, Local 2302, and authorizing a formal written collective bargaining agreement incorporating the terms of the Memorandum of Agreement for a five-year period commencing January 1, 2017. Moved. Moved. Second. Motion to made second. Any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. No, Madam Chair. Uh, it does, but it doesn't really have to do with this resolution to some extent. Um, to to Jerry and the administration, as members of the body, I remember when the union came before uh, the board regarding one contract and then two was regarding <coughs> the separation of unions. Jerry, any any update? What whatever happened with them wanting to split with the they're, union yet? They're still they're both in the union. Both both groups are still in the union. We've spoken to. Uh, the, the state, as I told you, I would do. I went back, spoke with the, the, the new executive director, spoke with the new executive director, asked him if he would have somebody intercede. They they did. Miss Starr is here. She can tell you they they sent. Want you want you want to take two seconds to explain who they sent down here. So they they actually they got a um, an attorney involved who uh, met with the groups with, with the with the one group. And uh, I guess they came to the conclusion that they are one unit and they were happy to proceed as one and we were able to set the table and successfully negotiate a contract for a five year period. So, so there was so no change in the status of the union. They're so, all so, so I'm clear, I'm not as astute as Jerry is. Um, so are you indicating that because the two sit down and negotiate a contract together, they're no longer interested in separating at this particular time? Yes. For at least a five-year period? Yes, that's correct. And, and that's part of the agreement of the contract? Yeah, the there was no change in the... Um, was there no change? There, there was no the, change. Okay. So that, if y'all remember, that was the, yeah. one of the biggest issues that you up here yeah. on trying to separate. Right. So the contract kind of worked back. And, and they all came to the... So there were people from both places at the table, so they felt that everybody was... Uh, and they came, because they family, and yes, so they yes. were able to work it out. Yes. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. big issue, the big issue for us was who, who they sent down here. They, okay. they sent someone who could probably explain this much better than the original state rep that they had. Okay. That was. Thank you. Uh, roll call. Bennett. Yes. Bertino. Yes. Corsi. Yes. Days. Yes. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Formica. Yes. Risley. Yes. And Kern. Yes. <coughs> 
grant application and acceptance of state fiscal year 2019 law enforcement officers training and equipment fund grant funding from the state of New Jersey Department of Law and Public Safety Office of the Attorney General amount not to exceed $11,765. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the pre-holders? <coughs> the public? Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Uh, 657. Grant acceptance from the New Jersey Department of Law and Public Safety for the Sexual Assault Response Team Forensic Nurse Examiner Program. Grant funding $86,942. County in kind match $21,736. Second. Motion made second. Uh, any freeholder comments? Comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 658. Reappointment of Alan DeStefano to the Atlantic County Youth Services Commission for a term to expire on October 1, 2022. Moved. Second. Motion remains second. Any pre order comments? Comments from the public? <coughs> Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Formica? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. 659. Resolution of support for County Executive Levins and a declaration regarding Section 287G and the New Jersey Attorney General's Directive 2018 6, sponsor Karen L. Fitzpatrick. Moved. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the freeholder board? Karen, Sure. I. Uh, brought forth this resolution um, for a couple of reasons. We had a resolution in August, I believe, that um, I, I understand the intent was to uh, portray the county's feeling toward its immigrant community at, and uh, the wording wasn't exactly pleasing to the community and the resolution was withdrawn. So I felt that it would be good to just say it plainly what the county's policy is that we are not uh, going to go against the Attorney General's directive as two other counties in New Jersey are blatantly doing Cape May County and uh, Sussex County and Atlanta County is not doing that and I think it's uh, good for our all of our community to know that. <laughs> Thank you. I have a letter here today that was written to all of us by the uh, executive. And I'd like to read that into the record. Dear Freeholders, I received a copy of Resolution 659, sponsored by Freeholder Fitzpatrick. The resolution delineates the ethnicity of our county population. What possible purpose could this serve? I've spent month, months fighting a fabricated allegation of racism in this administration, and now this. I cannot think of anything more divisive or useless than to include such statistics in this resolution. Racism is an unfortunate reality. In Atlantic County, we work hard to be inclusive and our actions support this. So again, I must ask, what does Freeholder Fitzpatrick hope to accomplish in pointing out the number of whites, blacks, Hispanics, and Asians, etc., that live in Atlantic County? What relevance does this have to this resolution? Many would contend that it only adds fuel to those who wish to focus on our differences. I prefer to concentrate my efforts on bringing our communities together. And even more perplexing is the fact that I did not ask for a resolution of support. Dennis Levinson, County Executive. And I think that's what hit me about this resolution. Because I don't know what, if anybody knows what 287G is, it has nothing to do with the ethnic makeup of a county. What I do know is that that ethnic makeup was correctly stated here, and this is what we should reflect upon. 275,000 residents are in Atlantic County, and 102,000 of them are on some type of social assistance. So, the final statement in this resolution is, I believe, now therefore be resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders of Atlantic County supports Dennis Levinson's declaration 
uh, that the administration of the County of Atlantic has no intention to enter into an agreement under 287G. He never made that declaration. He just did it. He just decided not to be involved in the 287G authorizing of sheriff's officers in certain functions of ICE. So I think it's better served to say that whereas the Board of Chosen Freeholders supports all law enforcement officers, federal, state, county, and municipal, upholding the Constitution of the United States and the state of New Jersey, therefore it be resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders supports the county administration's policy of executing services in a non-sanctuary county. And I'd like to amend the resolution. Absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't have we a second. Have, there should be a second. Oh, no, so I want to an answer. Second. Thank you. Thank okay. You. So, first off, we agree that I never wanted Levinson's name on this resolution, but as a <coughs> matter of compromise, that's what happened. Secondly, our chairwoman strongly advises that we include data in our resolutions. She likes that. So that's why that's there. And thirdly, we should all be aware of the demographic makeup of our county so that our social services and representatives and uh, leadership represent or are reflective of that demographic picture. And that is why these statistics are in there. Believe me, okay? Believe me, this county more than any knows the demographic makeup of its citizenry. It doesn't need to be reflected. What I would like to ask you is, what does this particular set of facts have to do with 287G? We're talking about other counties who are contracting with ICE to basically search for nonviolent people who live in their areas and take them away from their families, minorities. And that is why that information is relevant to this resolution. This 287G has nothing to do with any other count, any other county. We've decided not to enter into it. I still don't understand what delineating out the, the ethnic makeup of this county has to do with it. I think that it's relevant. It's my resolution. Okay, and I, I, I've asked for it to be amended. And there's we a have second. a second on that. The, uh, it always goes to the amendment first, and then if it passes, then the uh, resolution as amended would be put to a vote. Uh, Roger, can you speak up? I'm sorry. <coughs> no, that way instead of this way. The, uh, the, the second has been made to the amendment. <coughs> Therefore, the, uh, the sequence in which you take your action is to vote on the amendment first. And if that passes, then resolution as amended goes to a vote. Okay, so right now we have a motion to amend it on the floor and we have a second to it. Can we ask for other comments? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Okay. It, it is interesting if I was <coughs> that I don't know where I said what y'all do. Could you back the orders not to support it? But be as it may, the whole campaign we talked about institutional racism and you want to be making a big campaign issue. And the freeholder has brought a resolution before this board and now you want to continue to come up with all types of uh, different areas uh, to diminish whatever it is she wants to do in her resolution. Now, I think what should have happened, Frank, as a former chairman, I think it is, should have been some discussion <coughs> rather than to come here to do Denny's bidding today uh, on this resolution, since the resolution uh, is on the agenda and it just didn't show up, but a letter came from the county executive to talk about this resolution. What should have been as a courtesy was to say, can we consider pulling it to another meeting to discuss it rather than sit up here and start the grandstand and the pontificating um, as you're doing. Now, I have no objection uh, if it was suggested uh, that we pull it and go back for further discussion, but it was funny to me during the whole entire campaign, you run around and you talk about institutional racism, this, that, and the other. And uh, then when this resolution hits the agenda, because you know as well as I know, it just didn't show up yesterday to be placed on this agenda. 
So there should have been some discussion or conversation regarding this resolution prior to today, whether it came from Levinson or whoever. Um, and so when I listened to, to my colleague over there, and she's indicated uh, that the chair herself likes to talk about uh, data, et cetera, um, I'm not saying it's right, wrong, and different, but we should have really, as a courtesy among ourselves, should have said, let's pull it, bring it back, let's have a discussion before we move forward. That's, I think that would have been the proper thing to do. Okay, may I comment? Well, sure, I've never been able to stop you. That's a lie. Uh, the fact of the matter is, we have a difference of opinion on who is inciting racism. And I think the statistics here are trying to depict the county as being insensitive to race, to any type of racism. This to me is something that was unnecessary. If the resolution had just said, we want to commend the county executive for not engaging with 287G, that would have been one thing. But to infer that the county is insensitive again by these statistics is infuriating to me, not Dennis Levinson. All due respect, again, you already got your mind made up. You do whatever you want to do. This is what you do anyway. But the, the real part of the question was that I think, as a courtier among your colleagues, you should have asked that Ben Paul have a discussion whether we agree with the statistics or not. <coughs> not sit here and grandstand um, on a resolution. Again, the campaign talked about institutional racism. Then he wanted to call with clergy and the NAACP. Uh, he thought he was being called a racist, et cetera, et cetera. Listen. The census tells a whole different story. We all know that. We don't participate in the census like we should be. And a lot of people are uncounted. And at the end of the day, it's all of our responsibility to get those counts up and, and get people counted. Me personally, I would have recommended that our uh, sponsor would have pulled it and went back and got some additional data, opposed to standing here adding different language without even having a discussion because we're, we're, we're running off of a letter of Denny Levison, opposed to us collectively talking to our colleagues. May I make one more comment? You make two more. The statistics here that are quoted accurately are from the census of residents. 287G usually has to do with people that are not residents. Okay. So Those are not counted. Are they're not counted, that's okay. correct. Okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Are you still talking? Absolutely. Thank you, Freedom. I can't beat up what you guys, I don't want to beat up what Frank, I can't do I mean, I know what the county executive's letter said, but I came to the same conclusions on my own. I mean, I'm capable of doing that sometimes. Sometimes? The, the, we're talking about night sometimes. <laughs> I'm, I'm married too. Um, <laughs> we'll see this later. Ninety-two percent, as as Bill from Mika said, are, are resident. Or as far as I know, the two eighty-seven G's not talking about ninety-two percent of the people mentioned in the first section. I mean, I don't understand the reason for the inclusion. I, I, I kind of agree with that. Um, there are other reasons. That I, I don't remember the county executive making any such declaration, other than just simply not signing an agreement. But there's a cost involved with deputizing and training officers as well. I mean, that may be why. I, I don't know the reason that, that, I mean, this isn't specific. We're not involved in 287G. Uh, you know, when we talk about ICE coming in, we've also said that, I guess, the Attorney General's ruling says we can't contact ICE, but if ICE contacts us, we're going to let them take the felons out of the county jail. I think that's been said as well. Like, correct me if I'm wrong. That's the, that's the law. So I'm just saying, that, you know, we will work with all law enforcement. I mean, that this, you know, I want to make that clear as well. Thank you, Real Dispatcher. Sure. So, because the chairwoman likes data, that's why that's included. If you want to take that paragraph out, I'm fine with that. But she and I talked about this extensively, and that's how she wanted it. If you want to take it out, I'm fine with that. But, but, Madam Chair, if I'm asking, I'm not going to sit here and beat a dead horse to death. But again, if this had been on the agenda prior to last Tuesday's election, it probably wouldn't even be a discussion because they're afraid they might have lost votes along the way. The fact of the matter is, is this. 
distance does not just show up on the agenda today. It's been on the agenda for the last week and a half whenever the agenda came out. Again, I'm only saying to my colleagues, if it was that such of a big issue, all you had to do was pick up the phone and ask the sponsor, could we take it off, pull it, and have a discussion about it? That, that was my whole conversation. Whether we agree with the, the, the data numbers or not, um, again, we run around here, we, when it's politically expedient, we talk about it. Uh, when you, know, you think it's something that's going to hurt you, you run from it. The fact of the matter is, is this. Um, going forward for the 2020 census, again, I, I'll, I'll repeat myself, but we've got to make sure everybody is counted, whether we agree with these, this, this, um, this data or not. We understand that the census allow, uh, determines how much federal funds, et cetera, et cetera, you get in your district. However, um, nobody's living in a perfect world, whether it's this Board of Freeholders, whether it's the county exec, et cetera. Um, but I think as a courteous, as a, among our colleagues, I think the proper thing would have been to ask them to pull it, go back, come back with it at another meeting, not sit there and do amendments, et cetera, et cetera. That, that was my whole beef because it just didn't show up today as new business. But the letter came when from the county executive? When did the letter come? Today. That's my point. So he had plenty of time, as he always do, Look at the agenda and see what's on it. It could have been something like but, but, but do as you may. I, I just wanted to raise that issue. But uh, Frank, all due respect, as a former chairman, you know, I give you a lot of credit and a lot of respect for you, but I think the right thing would have, would have to do was to contact the sponsor and ask that it be poured. Not because Benny Levinson decides to send a letter down here today to the freeholders, and now we make it a dog and pony show. All right. Well, right now we do have uh, a motion on the floor to amend. No, ma'am. Ma ma oh, no, no, Madam Chair. All due respect, you can have all the motions you want in a conversation. You can't move until the conversation is over. Are you still talking? What? Well, well, I was like, well, I'd like to. Okay. I, I just, I, I kind of take offense. You keep talking about this being political, politically expedient. It's not our resolution or my resolution. It doesn't matter if it's your resolution or not. Okay, it's but we didn't put this on the agenda is what I'm saying. A freeholder put this on the agenda. Correct, but you keep saying that you run away from it when it's not going to benefit you politically. Rich, listen, I all due respect, rich, rich, all due respect, don't go there. But, but okay, Richie, don't okay. go there. But see, right. you're making accusations. I'm not making, I'm making facts. facts. Don't go there. No, but okay, see, put it on my side. Wait a minute. Don't go there. Don't go there. But you gentlemen. started it. I'm not. sorry. I'm in the comments. You quite honestly we are not The fact of the matter is, is, I said from the door, if it was an issue regarding this resolution, it should have been discussed prior to coming here. It just didn't show up on the agenda. And you said it but a letter came. But a letter came from the county executive today. Correct. And you're responding to the letter of the county executive. I'm responding to the resolution on the agenda. Did you make any comments prior to the day regarding this resolution? Did I have to? Did you say you responded to it? I didn't say I responded to it. I'm responding currently, right now. At this yeah, but you're responding to the agenda. based on a letter. No, I'm not. And I said that clearly Richie, in my statement. On. The very first thing Richie, I said oh, when I spoke was, come on. I okay. came to my own. Can we bring the meeting back? Well, it's, it's in the same meeting. I just disagree. Well, that and that's okay, but very loudly too. <laughs> so and I've never heard Richie Lay's voice like that. I'm impressed. <laughs> All right. So, do any other freeholders have a comment? Yeah, I, I think the fact that this resolution on the agenda is ridiculous. Quite frankly, it's ridiculous. It doesn't have to be here. It's grandstanding. I would pull it. I would end it right now. That's my position. Madam Chair, my man. To, to, to my colleague who seems to have, have have some consideration, would you consider that the sponsor pull it and go back for further discussion? I don't think it's necessary. Why not? I don't think this is necessary. I think we should take, take counsel. Right. Counsel. Uh, yeah, right sequences, uh, you now have an amendment that has been proposed and seconded. That changes the nature of the resolution. In essence, it's become modified almost a new resolution if you will. So if there is to be a pulling of the resolution, there has to be, first of all, a, um, an agreement among the maker of the second and the, uh, and the second to, in fact, uh, pull their, their second and their motion. That gets it back to where it started, to the maker of the motion and the seconder of the motion for the resolution. But you can't get there. You 
Which brings me back to my other question, that if, in fact, there was a consideration to withdraw the second, pull the resolution, whatever she needs to do, uh, my colleague, to go back to either uh, make a new resolution or amend the resolution, opposed to either voting it up or voting it down at this particular time. Not saying that you cannot bring it back. The fact of the matter is, is that uh, maybe it needs some more um, language or some more, um, you know, Conversation. Just a suggestion. Thank you for your Because I don't want Rich raising his voice at me again. Uh -huh. That would be nice. Um, okay, do we have any other comments right now? So the question becomes would they withdraw the second and would you consider pulling the resolution? This is, I'm sorry, man, if I may. That, that, that's okay. Good. Uh, why don't we get it again? Give us the procedure, Roger. Procedures, you have to deal with the, uh, the amendment to the motion first. Your motion the, and Mr. There's a motion Humphrey to amend it. It's specific. It was read into the record. We know what it says. And there was a second to it. So before we can get to the main motion of the resolution, it got it on the uh, on the agenda on the table to begin with, we have to deal with the second. So we have to deal with that first, but then we also have to speak with... Could, we, could you read the amendment again? Sure. But here, here's the thing. We got to ask Patrick. But in order to ask, he has somebody has to withdraw the second. Am I correct? The, the amended you, motion. You can talk all you want, but uh, okay. you know, I frankly, if I was the seconder of, 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 the, of the amendment, I wouldn't withdraw it unless I knew what she was saying. Right. Right. I, I want to call for a vote. Yeah, we can move the table. It's, you know. We can move the table. But that hasn't been done. Right. Can I just say one more thing? It's very ironic because this first came up in September, and when it was worded this way, I thought it was too uh, politically uh, proactive in Mr. Levinson's favor, and I, I didn't like the way it was written. So it was. It wasn't. I don't think it ever made it to an agenda. No, we didn't even have discussion on it. And at the time. then we brought it back. And I submitted it in time to be uh, on the October 29th agenda. But Chairwoman said, it's too close to the election. Let's move it after the election. So we agreed to do that. So it had some political so ramifications to it. We both thought that. And we thought that after the election would be the best. Uh, so I just think it's yeah, ironic it's that I thought it was leaning one way. and. Apparently, other people think it's leaning the other way. It's kind of right. so, Madam Chair. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not raising the voice. I just, I mean, I think it's a fact that the county executive at this time has not signed a 287G agreement, and as far as I'm, I know, has no interest in signing one at this time. I don't understand why. I mean, it hasn't happened. I don't understand why we even need to vote on supporting his decision to not agree. sign something. To agree. That's because we are acting differently than our neighbors. We are acting, in my opinion, in a better way right. than our neighbors. And he did make that assertion at a meeting with uh, citizens. Right. So he did say that he would never do that. Maybe he never put it in writing. I think it's a good thing. I don't know. I can't understand why <coughs> you're you don't want to say that he's doing a good thing. I just did. I just. So why won't you vote on it? Madam Chair, I'm at. Madam Chair, I'm going to make a motion today. Mm -hmm. But we have, we still have a motion. I'm still going to make a motion. Well, you can make a motion to the table, the amendment, and the main motion of the year. That uh, would require a second, and then it would have to pass. Oh, I, if I could. I want to reiterate that this resolution as written, as far as I'm concerned, serves only one purpose, to underscore the false accusation that racism existed in this county under the county executive's tutelage. I don't like it. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think it's necessary to affirm his actions. He may have said something, but he didn't release a declaration. And what I'm saying is that this Board of Chosen Freeholders should support all law enforcement, as, as stated, 
federal, state, county, and municipal, upholding the Constitution of the United States and the state of New Jersey, and therefore let it be resolved that the Board of Chosen Freeholders supports the county administration's policy of executing services as a non-sanctuary county. That's my amendment. Unfortunate reality. No question about it. And, and I question some of my modalities and full time. All right, so right now I still have a motion so and a, a second for an amendment. We have a motion to table which has not been seconded, right? Is there a second for it? If there is not, then that motion dies. If there is a second to it, then it goes to a vote as to whether or not to table. And we're tabling the amendment. Tabling the amendment first. Table. I said, I said. Uh, motion, second to table the amendment. Chair, I just want to be clear on the motion if we table this, that this comes back rework that and that institutes the language that we follow state federal law as we've always stated. Like we've just discussed. If it doesn't have that in there, I'm not pulling in my second. Because if it's gonna be if we're gonna decide it now, let's just decide it and talk it out. What we're doing in our amendment is strictly by the law, which we've always followed and we all agree to do. I don't see where we're playing back, back and forth with numbers. As amended, it would be fine for me staying the way it is. It answers the question of your resolution. Make your decision that way. It's up to everybody else on what you want to do. So right now, the way I see it, I'm not pulling my second on the amendment. We're going to vote on it. Motion to table is not supposed to be debatable. Bennett? No. Bertino? Yes. 
Corsi? No. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? No. Ramika? Yes. Risley? Yes. Kern? Yes. All right, the next step is the motion as amended. Okay, so now I need a motion. We don't need a motion. No. All right, so. So the floor, the floor at this point in time entertains a motion on the resolution as amended. Okay. No, 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 no. Hers is already on the yeah. floor from when she originally did the resolution and she put the first on it discuss it. So you're voting on it as amended. Right. That's right. Okay. Right? right. All right. Now, now I make a motion to tape. You can do that. He could. Oh, I know you can do it. I'm waiting for you to do that. And, and listen, let, let, let's be very clear. The motion to tape is simply to take it back rather than to have a no vote come back with the language that we all can live And to my point earlier, as long as the sponsor knows coming back, it has to meet the language that we just amended to. If not, I won't. And that's why I'm very explicit in what I said, that we'll bring back the resolution that we all could live with. So, so therefore, I have a motion to take. And what you said in a motion to change was not debatable. So the I it. Uh, just continue to uh, Motion made in second. But it's not in discussion. Well, What's that? No. Okay. Motion made in second to table. Table. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? No. Corsi? Yes. Dave? No. Fitzpatrick? No. Ramika? No. Risley? No. And Kern? No. Motion to tape. So, we have to vote on the resolution as amended. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roll call. We're voting on the resolution as amended. You usually have public comment before. No. 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 Well, you've already had comment, and the chair has the prerogative to, 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 to comment again if you wish. You've already done it uh, right. extensively. Yeah. So, roll call. Bennett? No. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? No. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? No. Ramika? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Motion carries. Motion the uh, the resolution is amended to Paris. Okay. Uh, six, 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 zero. Six, six, eight. Amending resolution three of 2019, canceling the regular meeting of November 19, 2019, and informing the newspapers. Second. Motion remains second. Any comments from the pre on board? Any comments from the public? Roll call. Bennett? Yes. Bertino? Yes. Corsi? Yes. Days? Yes. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ramika? Yes. Risley? Yes. And Kern? Yes. Okay, that brings us to reports of special committees of the board. Does anybody have any reports from the special committees? Brianna? Uh, sure. Just one. Bridges and Roads Committee met this past week to go over um, <laughs> project status on a lot of the projects around the county. Um, Weather has been a problem, of course, and we did discuss uh, some of the issues um, uh, with a few of them. We also did discuss um, our issues back here with our residents that came in um, from Galloway Township back, um, back on that one road that we always hear about with the speed bump. So, um, Is that Mott Street? Mott Street. So, Jay, thank you for that. Uh, Jerry, uh, the county administration has been discussing with Galway Township some resolutions that they wanted to pursue. So at the moment, our discussion on what we were doing, um, we're not going to do speed bumps at the moment until uh, Jerry's fit, administration is finished with their discussion. However, we are going forward with all the signage and the uh, signalization that, uh, that was recommended uh, by John Peterson. Uh, we're going to go ahead and still purchase that equipment to get out there because it still should be out there irregardless of what transpires long term. Thank you for your Do we have any other reports on? Um, just, uh, Madam Chair, if I made through to um, Virginia and Virginia. I think so. Um, you 
said Jerry's going to have a conversation with the residents. No, now Jerry's been know. Jerry's been discussing with the administrator Galloway Township okay. on some resolution that they okay. work on. Uh, there has been discussions with the police department enforcement. Yeah. 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 Do we have any other? Um, I attended the Veterans Advisory Board meeting, uh, quite a busy, I think we have a full board now with uh, Mary Sarkis Wright, so there's quite a few people uh, there, a very active board. There's one thing they brought up, there was a Mission Act of 2018, uh, which is a actually adding services uh, for the veterans, and this went into effect this June. So because it's so new, a lot of um, many organizations, businesses aren't aware of it. So they do tell people to go to our website, make sure that you're informed. Uh, for instance, there's some additional pharmaceutical uh, uh, you know, things added to this. So when someone went to the pharmacy, the pharmacy was not aware of it, and this is all local. So they uh, really are asking people to become aware of that you know, within the veterans community. There's also a car dealership that's asking, uh, they want to donate money to our veterans. I think we're trying to figure out how to how to work that out. I think uh, they may have contacted you or Jim in reference to this. So every car that's sold, a certain percentage is going to go to uh, the veterans organization, which is very nice. Uh, also mental health, uh, I attended that this week. Uh, schools are getting much more involved in the mental health issues. Uh, they're adding services and partnering with uh, community organizations and working with parents and students and that. So that's, you know, really great news because uh, our youth really do uh, need this at an early age. So they talked a little bit about early intervention. They brought in Oaks. I look at you. I'm sure you know very much about this and how important early intervention is for our, our youth. So that we really seem to be addressing that. Uh, one other thing they brought up was the hoarding issue, which I found interesting. It, it, it's pretty big in our area, and it really came to fruition uh, after Hurricane Sandy, with all the first responders going into some of these homes and they couldn't get into them or it was very dangerous. Uh, and every time you bring this up, someone's like, yeah, I have an in, I've got a this, i got a that. So, you know, it, it's, it's pretty prevalent. So they're doing a good job in getting this out. Uh, right after Sandy, they uh, they uh, went out and uh, applied for a grant for this, so they're really, you know, working hard towards that. Uh, and that's all I have. But no other. Um, unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business? New business. Anybody have any new business? Written communications and petitions? Yes. Um, in addition to the letter or letter and resolution that we received from Pleasantville School Board regarding the expansion at ACIT, we also received one from the Greater Egg Harbor Regional School District mm -hmm. opposing the expansion of ACIT, and I understand that there is at least one other coming our way. Um, and I have a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, we also all received a letter from Matt Dowdy, the executive director of the CRDA, um, talking about bathroom renovation that they want to do on the boardwalk. And Matt's presentation was really good. He, he talked about it plainly. When we, when we want to talk about clean and safe, and we know uh, research shows that women uh, make a lot of the vacationing decisions in households uh, for a mom to put her child on the potty it needs to be clean and in good repair and so uh, the CRDA is looking to refurbish the bathrooms on the boardwalk and they are asking the county to uh, pitch in $500,000 for the uh, $4.6 million project. And I think that's a good, uh, good spend. Madam Chair, if I may? Absolutely. Uh, I think that's the question that we need to direct to the administration. Um, in terms of, um, <coughs> I, I they have to ask the good administration, right? Because I think it's harmless, there's all kinds of issues. Involved. Yeah, but they want to do shared services and partnerships. This is a good way to show your good faith effort with the nine point one billion uh, million dollars in surplus. Exactly. I don't know if, in fact, the county could use bond money. I don't know if there's any money in any department, but Jerry, we, we certainly ask that you take a look and. I don't know what discussion, if any, you've had with CRDA at this point. Um, I saw that same letter. I think it's a win-win for everybody. Um, those of you who don't know, uh, those boardwalk bathrooms are in such 
just repaired. Uh, they have been piecemealed, and Frank, I think you would agree, um, for years. Um, we have to close them at a certain hour uh, at night to keep them from either sleeping in there, washing up in there, shooting up in there. Um, but they are rusted. They, they, have, they have stood the test of time. Um, when we talk about Atlantic City being the destination, I think it's, it's a good opportunity for all of us to pitch in, whether it's CRD, the city of Atlantic City, the county, everybody takes a part in it. Um, we can all boast about um, how we try to um, improve the quality of, of life soda uh, when you use the bathroom. Nobody wants to go to a nasty, dirty, stinky, smelly, rusted bathroom, except Frank. You go to the bakery. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, all seriousness, I don't know where that would line up with the county, but it's something we need to try to look at. Let me ask you, did, did the letter go to the executive? Yes, he I, sent it to us. Yeah, that's where it went to. I can see that recovery on it. What is the cost of this bathroom? Four point one. No, that's eight bathrooms. How much money is four point six million? Four point six million that the CRDA is funding, and they want the county to fund a half a million of that. Right. Okay. I got a better idea. Okay. Why don't the CRDA contract with the county to do the bathroom, save a million, and we'll keep the half a million of their money? <laughs> right. That's part of the conversation. I don't know that it is, but I'm just saying, instead of giving them a half a million, let us do the contract. Whatever we save over a half a million, we keep. How's that sound? We always do it. They only, got, they only got to give us four, oh, yeah. we only got to give us four point one million. If we make it for three and a half, we'll have six hundred thousand. That's what I like. It's a great the best run county. Help pitch in with the bathroom. It's a great idea. And I can guarantee you at the bathroom, there's no uh, high foreclosure in the, in the bathroom. But again, in, on a serious note, we need to figure out, or at least have the conversation uh, with the uh, with Matt Darden and, and, and yeah, No, I agree. I agree. Um, and the other written pieces? Yeah, the other written communications and petitions? Okay. That's it. Uh, okay, so now we open up for public comments. Anybody with public comments? Thank you. Uh, Creed Pogue, 169 Cumberland Avenue. Uh, I'll extend congratulations to Freeholder Corsi <coughs> and Freeholder Days. They haven't been certified yet, but it looks like those are definitely going to be the results. Uh, and to Carolyn Gatta, but she's not here. Um, regarding Resolution 659, uh, the statement regarding the county executive having made a declaration, was that part of the original text that was submitted to the solicitor? No. Okay. Did everybody hear that answer? That wasn't part of the original text. That Are that was you submitted. suggesting that I put that in? That's not so. That's what you're suggesting. Well, came from somewhere. It was submitted to uh, me uh, after a series of negotiations between uh, uh, Chairwoman Gatto and uh, this uh, inspector. Okay. The word declaration reached me after okay. their negotiations. Okay. And, uh, I, there was any misapprehension there, I apologize. Well, I wanted to cure whatever okay. error there might have been in what you just said. Okay. But I do notice that the uh, buzzwords non-sanctuary uh, is now been adopted. Uh, but the state of fact that not doing anything with 287G and that the county is fine uh, with the immigrant trust directive, uh, while that's true, uh, is not being stated and that we um, also, with all due respect, have a problem stating what the census says which just does seem a little strange. Um, and I believe that, unless I missed it, um, the words, neither the words institutional nor the words racism were anywhere in that resolution. I may have missed it somewhere, but I, I don't think they were in there. Um, so, we are somewhat, it seems from time to time, seeing that some facts are facts, and other facts may be facts, but we don't call them as facts. Uh, we'll see how we do in the new year. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? 